Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. See you guys? There's nothing to worry about. Welcome back to the Least Professional Channel on YouTube, and welcome to Ohio Legends and Tales. Today we're going to be talking about the legend of Bloody Mary. Before we get started though, I want to let you know this is one of a series of videos that I'm working on that focus on legends and tales from around the state of Ohio. A lot of these are going to be urban legends, a lot of them are going to be tales that you may or may not have heard. I'll link a playlist right up here, so check that playlist out if you want to see the rest of the series if you haven't yet. And uh, if that sounds like something that you're uh, going to be interested in, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. That really helps me out and lets me know that uh, I'm doing something right here. So let's go ahead and get into it. So 60 years ago in the early 1960s, there was a tree that sat right here behind me. Underneath that tree was the grave of a woman named Mary Jane. Now, there was also a summer camp close by called Hidden Hollow Summer Camp. And one of the camp counselors from that from that camp actually walked up here there's some trails and stuff to go through the woods here and he, he walked up here to the cemetery to try and find a good story a, a legend that he could you know tell to the kids around the campfire and creep them out a little bit on those nice summer evenings where they had the campfires and the s'mores and all that kind of stuff so he came up here and he found the grave of mary jane underneath the tree and he thought to himself that would make a great story so during one of those summer nights sitting around a campfire he relayed the story of Bloody Mary Jane. The basic gist of the story was that Mary Jane was a witch and the local townspeople had got fed up with her because she was using her magic to harm people and do, and do evil. And one night they wound up going and capturing her, arresting her and bringing her to the cemetery where they put up a stake and they put up a, a big pile of wood and they burned her at the stake right next to the tree here. Sometimes the legend would involve her being hung from the tree, but most of the time it was her being burned at the stake. And then they buried her here in the cemetery. Now after telling the kids this legend, they would all walk up here, usually in the dark, it's nighttime, come up here to get a nice good scare, to come to the, to come to the grave of Mary Jane. So part of the legend involved Mary Jane cursing the townspeople and everybody that would ever come to visit her grave. She did this right before they executed her. And supposedly, this curse involved some bad things that would happen to people that would come up to the cemetery at night, which, you know, when they bring in, they're bringing the kids up here at night to try and scare them. And then the other part of it kind of bled over into the, the actual legend of Bloody Mary involving a mirror, where you could say her name in the mirror, and she would come out and she would scratch your face or kill you or, or something like that. And I think part of the reason that it bled over was because of the, the name similarity there. And, you know, hearing that kind of story will creep somebody out. And if you've heard, you know, maybe hints of Bloody Mary in the past, or maybe as, as these kids got older, they would hear about Bloody Mary, tie the two legends together. Somehow they became en entrenched in one another over time. Now, as those kids that had gone through camp in the 60s and the 70s, as they started to grow older and driving and getting into high school and that kind of thing, a lot of them started bringing their friends down here and they would come down here as a dare late at night and the dare was to come down here and see if you could walk up to bloody mary's grave and and have the nerves to be able to handle being there by yourself as part of that and as part of just teenagers coming up here on dares and that kind of stuff a, a lot of the headstones in, in the cemetery here started to get knocked over and torn down and, and it kind of it became a place for kids to come and hang out and party as opposed to being afraid of it. Now sometime in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, during one of those times where a bunch of teenagers were up here, somebody set the tree on fire. It burned, it didn't fall down though. It was in about 2011 when the county actually came out here and officially 
cut down the tree because not only was it an eyesore, but it was also a danger. If somebody was out here and there's a lot of wind, a lot of big storms that come through the area, it would just take one of those big storms or, or enough wind to come through and knock the tree over. And if somebody was up here, they could be injured or killed or other stones, that are, there's still a few stones standing, they could have been knocked over. So for those reasons, the county wound up cutting down the tree. So a big question that I'm sure you probably have that I know I had at first was, is this actually legitimate? Was there actually a witch named Mary Jane that lived in the area and had been killed in sometime in the 17th or 18th or 19th century? And the answer is no. As it turns out, and there's a plaque at the front of the cemetery here that actually has the names of everybody that is buried in the, in the cemetery because of how many headstones are knocked over. And her name is listed on there. There was a Mary Jane, but she wasn't a witch. She was a normal person. In fact, she was so normal that in eight, she, wound up, she died in 1898 and she died of cancer. So it wasn't anything crazy. It wasn't anything that she wasn't executed or anything like that. She was a, a perfectly ordinary woman, never had anything of note happen in her entire life. The only thing that happened was well after her death, when somebody took her name and attached it to a legend and, and the legend blew up. So if you're anything like me, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, so if this isn't the real Bloody Mary, who actually was Bloody Mary and where did that legend even come from? Now there's a few different ideas of where the legend of Bloody Mary originated. The most likely origin of the legend is a combination of a few different things there's not really one person in history that we can point to as that's Bloody Mary. Now some sources will try to say that Queen Mary the first of England would have been the source for Bloody Mary and, and that moniker. She ruled England from 1553 to 1558 and was the first woman ruler of, the, of, of England. And she gained a lot of notoriety and, and a lot of people try to tie her to the Bloody Mary legend because during her reign she actually had executed 240 men and 60 women because they were Protestants. So it was all kind of part of the, the Catholic Protestant back and forth there during that time in England when she was ruling and she was actually executing people because they were Protestants. And the, the thinking is that she was given the moniker of Bloody Mary because of all of that execution. The truth is that was never really tied to her until modern day when people started trying to look back for a source. Now some sources will also try to tie Elizabeth Bathory, who was one of the most, or the most prolific female serial killer in history, to the Bloody Mary legend. Now while that might make a little bit of sense because she killed a lot of people, the name Elizabeth doesn't really work with the legend, so the people that are trying to tie those two together, I don't, I don't think that they work very well together. Now the most, the most likely idea behind where Bloody Mary came from is actually from a children's game. Now this is way back in like the Victorian era and maybe even before that, there was a popular game that the young girls would play. And the intent of the game was to see, to try and see the face of their future husband and know who they were going to marry. And what they would do is they would hold a candle in one hand and they would hold a mirror in the other hand and walk backwards up a flight of stairs while staring into the mirror. And while they were staring into the mirror, they would, once they got to the top of the stairs, they would see the face of their future husband. At least that was what the game was. If they didn't see the face of their future husband, then the other thing they might see would be a skull or the face of death. And that was supposed to indicate that they were gonna die before they could even get married. Aside from that, mirrors themselves have also been seen as a portal to other dimensions. And a lot of times back in you know, the olden days, <laughs> they would actually, people would cover the mirrors in the house when somebody had died. And the reason that they would cover the mirrors was so that the person's soul would be able to pass on to the afterlife because the thought was that their soul would actually get trapped in the mirror if they saw it. You know, if they could see, you know, when they came out of their body, they'd fly into the mirror. So if you covered up the mirrors, they couldn't see that and instead would pass on to the afterlife. And kind of in that same vein, mirrors have kind of always had this mystic power over people. It's the ability to see our own reflections uh, up to and including the idea that breaking a mirror is considered bad luck. You'll get seven years bad luck if you break a mirror. Now, whether or not you actually get bad luck, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've broken mirrors in my life. I, I don't know that I've had any worse luck than anybody else. 
but just the idea and the thought that you know giving this kind of power to mirrors and then tying that into a legend like bloody mary you can see how that could build up over time but if you haven't tried this experiment i, I highly encourage you to go into a bathroom or into a room where you have a, a big enough mirror that you can see it use a low light maybe a dim flashlight or a candle works great set that up make sure that the light's really dim and then stare into the mirror and if you stare in the mirror and try not to blink don't blink any more than you have to after a very short time one to two minutes maybe a little bit longer you're going to start to see something happen it might be your face melting or changing into some other shape and it's kind of a cool effect if you've never tried it i do encourage you to try it out now there's a couple of different possible explanations for why we might see this this effect when we're looking into a mirror in low light some of it might have to do with uh just a hallucination brought on by the low light and the brain trying to make sense of what it's seeing because inherently you aren't used to seeing your own face so when you're seeing your own face and especially because it's mirrored you know it looks different if you take a picture because the camera flips around the image if you're looking into a mirror you're actually seeing the the, the opposite sides this is a really trippy kind of thing to think about but so your brain is trying to make sense of that in addition to it being low light and especially if it's candlelight and it's flickering a little bit it causes you, your brain trying to make all that sense of all this stuff at once it can actually cause these hallucinations and these weird things to, to kind of show up or right, another possible explanation for this would be troxler's fading that's the effect that you get if you've ever seen the optical illusion where you stare at the white dot in the center a circle of black dots that are all around and the black dots will start to fade out and that's due to the fact that our brains the way that the way that they take the input of sound and sight and all that kind of stuff inherently you can't process everything that you see so what your brain does instead is it it's almost like a computer where it will refresh the screen as it were but it only needs to really remember the things that you're actually staring directly at. So the things on your periphery or the things where that are outside of a certain zone, it'll start to fade that stuff out and it's less stuff that you have to think about or focus on. And a lot of that might most likely goes back to, you know, early man and worrying about predators and trying to, you know, keep an eye on things and look around. Now there's a lot of possible explanations for why our brains work this way. But just th those are the two main ideas behind why, our fa why you would see that kind of illusion in the mirror when you're staring at your face in low light situations. All right, so that's going to do it for the legend of Bloody Mary. Uh, what did you guys think of this legend? Had you ever heard, if you're not from Ohio, you may not have heard this particular legend of Mary Jane. Um, but had you heard the legend of Bloody Mary and had you ever tried as a child to play the Bloody Mary game and what were the results? So let me know that down in the comments below. Um, I'm trying to get these out every single Friday, so there should be another one coming out next Friday, but I don't have that one even planned yet. <laughs> There's been a lot going on, so I'm working on getting all of that done. But uh, make sure you do hit the like button if you did like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more, and keep an eye out for my cemetery chats on Tuesdays. And I will uh, see you all later. Have a great rest of your day.